We had one sheep. That sheep was the only animal that was never eaten. It was a pet. The sheep particularly, because they're silent, require observation. Art requires, if I do a portrait of someone, it requires me to notice their expressions when they're introverted, when they come out, how they smile, how they, how they use their energy. You can't be a flock master without being so observant. The sheep came from later in life. I started as a sculptress. I was doing mostly figurative, a lot of portraiture, which sort of goes into the sheep because most of the sheep are portraits. I love clay. I see movement in clay because you're doing it as a sequence in time. I do my paint. My paintings are over, there's no painting done overnight. They're usually done over weeks, months, sometimes years. I like movement. I work negatively. I, I create a positive image and I push into it with razors, with tape I'll erase, with particular sponges. I'll wash the surface. I like a, a heavy, thick, Belgian linen. I like the warp and weave. It creates a grid, sort of a modernist feel in the sense it's been used for ages, but we're used to seeing grids. I mock up an image with a horizontal and vertical lines. I never project. I do that because I can see how the negative spaces interface with the positive that create it kind of how things move in and out. Where the eyes are in this piece is important to me. They're not exactly in the photograph. They create a triangle. It's off-center. It goes into space and out. It connects with the ears. It's, it's a balance. It's an equipose. It's a directional thing. I erase until I get that kind of feel. I imagine it spreading out in space and giving breathing room and give, feeling people feel like they can dance with the image and move with it. That requires geometry. And people say sacred geometry. All artists are imbued with sacred geometry. We have it because we, we balance ourselves. We're working, I'm standing, I'm, I'm moving in and out of my image. This is sacred geometry. That's the way you make a line. You dance with your image. I, I usually don't sit and I, I want us to be upright. I want us to feel energized. I want someone to move in the image and back off of it and see it. The test of a great image, a teacher once said, is the three inches, three feet, and 30 feet. You want your audience to move close and feel energized. You want them to move back three feet and say, ah. Oh. 30 feet, you want them to say, come. I have something to offer you. I think almost every piece here, even the little ones, give that. What do I want you to feel? I want you to feel question after question after question come up. I don't want my pieces to match on the wall. I don't want them to disappear in an environment. I want them to ask you when you wake up to challenge you, to ask you why you're here, what this town has for you, what your life can give back to the community. I want those things to be resonating with this piece of art. I want to know what I offer to you and so I paint what I know and sheep I know and I'm proud of that.